G'day ZGD here, back with some more Path of Exile news. In this video, I want to share with you guys my thoughts and analysis on the new teaser post regarding the Maraketh weapons. This is an entirely new set of weapons. These are rare weapons that drop, uh, they start dropping in three tiers. They start dropping at the end of normal difficulty, you get the first tier. Second tier drops at the end of cruel difficulty, and the third tier drops at the end of merciless difficulty. Now, there are 13 new base types with these Maraketh weapons, and these are introduced because the Maraketh tribe plays a role in the Act 4 expansion. So like the curved blade that many of you guys have probably already seen that adds crit multiplier for two-handed swords for the first time ever, each of these new bases gives a new implicit that hasn't been seen on these types of weapons before. So some of these are pretty interesting, some of them a little bit more boring, but uh, a good mixture of new implicits that we haven't seen along with new base items entirely, so this means new damage ranges, new attack speeds, new crit chances and things like that. Now, DigiG has said a couple of things about these items in addition to the fact that they have these new implicits and new stats. Firstly, they will be rare drops that the first two tiers will have the same implicit, so we'll see the same 35% increased global crit strike multiplier on the on the tier 1 and tier 2 curved swords, for example, but the, the third tier, the ones that drops at, uh, at late merciless difficulty, will have a slightly higher implicit. So we've seen the other one, I think, had 50% crit multiplier, for example, and we should see similar scaling occurring on e each of these different items. Now the final really interesting point about this is that there are not planned to be any unique items, you know, any uniques associated with these new bases. So we're not going to see any unique dagger axes or any unique curved blades. Now at first that, seemed, that seems kind of sad, right? It would have been pretty cool to get a, a unique samurai sword of some description. But uh, I actually really like what GGG have done with this because the idea is that these are supposed to be uh, interesting extra craftable items that you can have. So things that you can craft or, try or get like really good rare drops in. And uh, the idea is for adding these bases that don't have any uniques associated with them is to increase the representation of crafted items at endgame and also to provide some interesting extra options for dropped and crafted items while leveling as well. I think that's really great about the Path of Exile itemization system that rares have, like crafted rares and dropped rares have a lot of power and they don't just compete with unique items but oftentimes they're a better choice when it comes to that raw power. Uniques typically offer build defining affixes or off slot affixes that you can't otherwise get. While as when it comes to these actual rare items, that's where you get a lot of your raw power from. It's where you get a lot of your life and resistances and damage and things like that. Well these implicits allow you to get some extra sort of unique modifier that you can't usually get through these new implicits, things like radius of area skills on a mace for example, but still have that sort of raw power of a, of a crafted rare. And some of these really high-end crafted rares, like some of these mirrorable items, become uniques in their own right, although they don't have the fancy orange text. These things have their own legend and a process that went into them when someone spent such ridiculous amounts of currency trying to craft the perfect item. These things become legendary in their own right, and I think that's really cool. So I'll go through some analysis of each of these new bases and what uh, use I see it having and uh, kind of how, how good I guess I think they are. Now keep in mind though that my analysis will reflect the current meta of the game. I'll try and keep in mind some of the changes we know about and keep an open mind about some changes that could come in the future and I'll mention those as we go. But I can only form opinions based on how the game plays currently after all and we haven't been able to play the beta for Act 4 just yet. So, the first one here is the Blade Staff. Staves have been uh, pretty good offensive items. There's, it's possible to go crit staves already in the game, but they always come with that implicit block. Now, implicit block is very, very powerful, and it's a big defining factor of staves, the fact that they are both a defensive and an offensive weapon. And for most melee staff users, I think most melee staff users are going to be very uh, attached to the idea of block. It is a very powerful mechanic in Path of Exile, and it is very thematic to staves. This new base, however, gives crit strike chance, a very high additional implicit crit strike chance, to staves. So this is going to be pretty nice for people that want to go full DPS staves. They're willing to sacrifice that defensive loss of losing the 8-12% to block chance in favour of getting much higher crit chance. The other thing I think this does is it opens up uh, staves as a better option for crit spellcasters. Staves are already a good spellcaster weapon in some cases because you can get a six link and you can get plus three gems on them by getting you know your plus one all gems and then your plus two of your element type gem. Well, this gives you the option of doing that 
with crit as well. This crit implicit does, of course, affect spells. So some extra nice options here. I think this is going to be uh, a pretty a pretty strong base type to craft for some sort of unique sort of uh, spellcaster build, and for those uh, stave users or staff users that want to just go really ham with the DPS and don't mind sacrificing those defenses. The next one is the Curved Blades. We talked about this a little bit on the podcast already and mentioned it a few times. This is a very, very powerful new thing. Getting a big chunk of crit multiplier is very powerful. Huge damage we're going to see with these new Curved Swords. Keeping in mind that the Tier 3 one, uh, at least from the teasers we saw before, had 50% crit multiplier, which is a large, large amount of crit multiplier. Getting something like 10-15% crit multiplier on the tree is not that unusual. So 50% in one implicit is quite insane. Now the thing that I think about this is that dealing with Reflect with these crit multiplier two-handed swords is already going to be hard enough with going crit two-handed swords you already hit so hard that Reflect is a significant issue. If you're, if you're something like Spectral Throw you can potentially evade it and if you're going armor based then you're going to need to stack a lot of that armor to deal with the high reflected damage you're going to deal and that's going to be even more present with crit multiplier but of course you always have the option of going something like Vile Pact. I think these are going to be very powerful and they're going to be a primary choice for any one going crit two-handed swords and it's going to make that playstyle even more popular I think. I quite like the new spiked moles. We're seeing 4% radius of area skills. Keep in mind this is the implicit for tier 1 and tier 2. Tier 3 could be a little bit higher. It could be 6% or 8%. If it's 8% it's going to be really really nice. 4% is about one passive node on the tree. Not, not the notables but the regular nodes. So in the current meta the main reason to go two-handed maces is for stun, like that's what they all have associated with them and there's not really too much of a reason to go maces otherwise, like axes have more raw damage, swords have more crit and things available to them and typically faster, but maces, their main appeal has been in stun. This new base here, the increased radius, gives another good reason to go two-handed maces. So I really like this change because it makes going two-handed maces uh, a nice option, an attractive choice for a lot of other builds that stun isn't so important for. Like stun's always good in Path of Exile, stunning your enemies is an excellent defensive mechanic, but this opens up the option where people aren't super interested in stacking stun, or they're just getting enough stun through their damage anyway, and they want to instead focus on raw effectiveness of their characters. I think this is going to be great for things like Two-Handed Mace Static Strike, Ground Slam, Infernal Blow, and of course Sweep. All of these things are going to be great with this 4 to 8% potentially increased radius of area skills. I think a really nice base item. It's going to be very popular for those sorts of builds. The Dagger Axe. Guys, the Dagger Axe. <laughs> Why just use daggers when you can use three of them at once? That's also an axe. The enemy won't know what hit them. This thing is insane, and I think this is probably one of the most ridiculous bases just here. This has exceptionally high crit chance. This this dagger axe, man, it's insane. So the implicit uh, effects, obviously, the... Uh, the base crit strike chance of the weapon, this is how these sorts of weapons work in Path of Exile, and all crit chance then scales that on top of that. Now you can actually get I think about 9% base crit chance on this with a, uh, a crit chance suffix as well, so if you roll this as a, a magical or a rare with crit chance as well you can get it up to 9%, which is very very high base crit chance. Now this is currently moderated by the fact that there are no crit chance nodes for axes specifically on the tree. Now, as I said, this is based on the current meta. This could change in the upcoming patch, but maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is GGG's idea of balancing this. They give they give people a ridiculous amount of crit chance on a dagger axe, but not much in the way of actual ways to scale that. Now, if we go over to the passive tree here, you can see I've highlighted critical and you can see some of the critical stuff that's available. Uh, over this side, we have things like disemboweling, which this will be able to be used by uh, the dagger axe wielders. We get some things like these accuracy ones. And of course, there are like your generic crit things as well. So, you know, Heartseek, gives you generic crit strike chance this cluster here and crit multiplier so there are some things you can do to scale it and of course you can stack power charges as well and get crit chance on the rest of your gear but there's not a lot of crit axe nodes I mean when you go for something like a sword build you also have access to excellent things like fatal blade to further scale your crit with the dagger axe you don't have that option so it might not turn out to be too ridiculous but as a base item comparing it to other base crit items on a two-hander it is absolutely insane so it'll be interesting to see how the passive tree potentially changes or if it 
Jean D doesn't change and that's how they're going about balancing it. The next item is this reflex bow. Movement speed on a bow is very thematically cool. We like the idea of bow as being bows. I'm a big bow fan, Path of Exile, of being, you know, pretty defensive, kiting around, being very mobile. And the idea of the reflex bow is very interesting and very intriguing. However, this is a very niche item. This is not going to see that much use, I don't think. Uh, unless maybe crit chance is heavily nerfed uh, for bows in the expansion, which I think there will be some slight reductions of crit chance, but I don't think it's going to be enough to make something like this attractive over a crit based bow. And even when it comes to elemental builds, you're going to you're gonna much more prefer something with 1.5 plus attacks per second instead of this 1.4 base. 1.4 is passable for an elemental build, and you could do it, but I think you'd be much better off going an attack speed uh, bow instead of this. So. I think the only thing that I can really foresee really taking advantage of this and this potentially being a best in slot for is Poison Arrow builds. I mean, Poison Arrow doesn't care about crit chance, Poison Arrow doesn't care about attack speed really. So getting extra move speed, getting four to eight move speed, maybe let's say the tier three bow is 8% move speed. That's actually pretty nice. If you're playing like a Poison Arrow Trapper, get plus, get a plus three bow, craft plus three on this or get a lucky drop. And then you've got 8% bonus move speed you wouldn't have otherwise had. Got a faster character, more defensive, works really well for kiting around with Poison Arrow. I can see this being a very nice base bow for Poison Arrow, but otherwise I think it's very niche. Might be used a little bit for leveling if you find a decent one while leveling, because you run a bit faster, you level a bit faster. But uh, otherwise, for regular bow builds, I don't see it being used all that much. With the small sword, we have here potentially a new thrusting base sword. Maybe looks a bit like it. It looks like a poking sword, <laughs> and uh, but with high, you know, with very high attack speed and very high crit chance as well. Pretty nice uh, stats on this weapon, and I think that's what's most attractive about it. But of course, the implicit is fairly interesting and is worth mentioning. The eight percent chance to cause bleeding on hit. There have been a few ways added to the game of getting this recently. For example, on the passive tree over here, we have the new bloodletting cluster with melee chance to bleed. And uh, I don't really, I don't, I don't know, I feel kind of meh about bleed on fast attacking weapons. I mean, it's it's crit, it's got a decent amount of crit strike chance, so you can potentially scale the damage enough to have the bleeds make some sort of difference. But I feel like most builds that use these sorts of weapons, the bleed doesn't really make that much difference on you, just end up outright killing the enemies anyway. So I don't get really too excited about bleed, even though it's kind of a cool idea, and thematically this is a cool thing. But the actual stats of this new base sword are pretty, pretty strong, I think. And we could see some nice builds made around this, because a lot, there's a lot of really cool scaling and stuff on the tree for this type of weapon that you can take advantage of. Overall, this is a high attack speed weapon with a lot of crit chance, and that's a lot. Of, that's attractive for a lot of builds. The next one we have here is the Horned Scepter, the Horned Scepter, with damage penetration. So this is damage penetrates 1% elemental resistances. So this isn't specifically fire, cold, or lightning. It's all of them, so it works just fine, no matter what sort of composition of elements you're working, uh, you're dealing with here. Now, elemental penetration path of exile is very strong, much stronger than the 1% would lead you to believe, and potentially the tier 3 one would have 2%. I can't see it going much higher than that, because 2% elemental penetration just by itself is actually a lot of effective damage increase. However, you know, whether this is actually better than 20% elemental damage depends on a lot of things. It depends on how much damage scaling you already have on your character, how much elemental damage you're already getting, and it actually depends on the specific resistances of the mob you're attacking as well. Now, I think at end game, damage penetration usually ends up becoming very, very strong, and a lot of this is going to be a very popular weapon for uh, elemental attack builds, some niche elemental attack builds, but also going to be very popular for a lot of elemental spellcasters as well. I think this is we're going to see this base a lot used by a lot of spellcasters, and uh, maybe we'll see it used in some sort of cool niche builds like glacial hammer builds. This next one, the ancient axe, is it's a bit of a disappointment, really. <laughs> There's nothing really that exciting about this weapon. It's 8% uh, increased physical damage is the implicit. I mean, there's nothing very attractive about this. I think it's a little bit... Yeah, I, I don't really... I'm not blown away by the Ancient Axe as well. I, I really can't see any potential use about it. I mean, Axes already have good damage. This sort of... This sort of 8% increased physical damage doesn't really do anything. The next one, the Hook Sword, though, is kind of interesting. 3% increased global defenses. In Path of Exile, that means things like Energy Shield, Armor, and Evasion. Uh, this is nice. I like the addition of a defensive weapon, of a very defensive weapon. We had we had staves in the past, uh, but having something like this that provides uh, a pretty unique stat. This is so far, I think, only been seen on one unique, Veil of the Night, I think it's called. Uh, I don't think I've seen it elsewhere from memory. It might be it might be in some other place, but um, 
It's a pretty interesting and unique stat. Thematically, the item is very cool, this idea of a defensive weapon. Some people just like to play tanky characters. And, you know, they've already got their shield, and they've got all their tanky armor, and they've got their sword with resistances on it, because why not? <laughs> but uh, this allows them to take it one step further and also get something that has a pretty, pretty decent defensive implicit. 3% is, like, akin to, you know one crappy ES node, but uh, on the tier 3 base, we could be seeing something a little bit better, like 6% or something like that, and uh, that is a little bit more attractive. Now, the hook sword may see some use in some sort of niche builds as an offhand weapon. Uh, you guys may may remember my uh, Southpaw Reeve Ranger, which held a mace in its main hand so that it would only attack with its sword with Reeve. You could do the same sort of thing in reverse. If you're playing like a ground slam character and you have a hook sword in your offhand, uh, you're only going to ground slam with your mace because you can't ground slam with a sword. So you're, you're getting the defensive bonus from this. Whether that's better or not than using a shield is up to how you build your character. Uh, the purpose of doing this is that you can actually take advantage of things like dual wield nodes, which has some nice crit and attack speed and block on the tree. So you can do some interesting sort of cutesy things with that and have a very cool and interesting themed character. So that opens up the potential for some of, the, some of that as well. And this also, I don't know, maybe this will see some brief use on uh, off-class characters like anything that's not using it for base damage can potentially use it for as a little bit of a defensive boost. Like for example, a Romvarax is a good example of this already in the game. An item that gives a lot of defenses uh, that is, you know, a, it's a sword that gives a lot of defenses. The Hook Sword is a similar sort of idea there. I don't think this will be super popular. I think this will just be kind of niche, but it might see just a little bit of use and it does op open up some nice thematic options as well. I like this next one quite a bit, the Snake Mace. This is a very fast one-handed mace, I think the fastest in the game. And uh, this opens up, and you know, if we're, we're talking faster attack speed on the tier 3 one, maybe even faster. But this opens up potential for some builds that weren't quite as attractive before, like making them a little bit more attractive. Some sort of unique things that we haven't really seen that much of, such as Elemental Ground Slam. I'd love to see some more of that action, and uh, I think the Snake Mace gives some potential for that. Next up, we have another defensive weapon, another defensive-themed weapon, the Parrying Dagger. This one comes with Block Chance. Now, 4% Block Chance is much stronger than 3% Global Defenses. Block Chance is very hard to get in the game now, and, you know, we don't know how that's going to change again in the next patch, but currently very difficult to get, and uh, this could potentially be even higher. We could be talking about 6% Block Chance on the Parrying Dagger. Now, you can, of course, dual-wield these and get, let's say, the Tier 3 version is 6% Block Chance. You can get 12% total Block Chance there, and then you can get a whole bunch of dual wielding block. You get some implicit dual wielding block just from dual wielding. And, you know, I think even daggers have some thing to theme with that as well, maybe. I can't remember exactly. But, um, you know, this is a it's, a... it's a solid defensive option. And it's actually worth considering, potentially. Now, the thing about crit chance is, again, that it scales the base crit strike of the weapon. And crit chance on daggers also works with spells. So it is a tough decision to make. But we could see some people in hardcore using uh, block daggers, again, instead of their uh, crit chance daggers to be a little bit more defensive, to play a little bit more safe. Or we could see some other niche uses of it. Block's just a very powerful stat, so it's very difficult to rule it out. I can't really say that this is not going to get some use, even though crit chance on daggers is like the entire reason you use a dagger is for crit chance usually. I can't rule it out because block is so very strong in the game. Grinning Wand gives increased car speed, so currently wands only give spell damage. We now have the option of car speed. This will see some use in some cases where you know, the car speed is more valuable to them. 4% car speed is not that attractive. That's about equivalent with what most passive nodes are. But again, the tier 3 one could be a little bit higher and that makes it a little bit more attractive. Most, most Spellcaster builds usually prefer spell damage, like the cast speed is not valued quite as highly, but there are definitely some spellcaster builds out there that uh, need to get a bit more cast speed, or you already get a, a good amount of the efficient cast speed from the tree, and this could be a decent option. So it's just gonna it's just gonna come down to an option of which for your particular build, spell damage or cast speed is more attractive for. The thing I'm kind of disappointed about here isn't really anything against the item. I mean, giving the choice of cast speed is not a bad addition to the game, but I was really hoping when I saw all this new class collection of items, and I was like, oh, there's a wand in there. I'm like, I'm hoping. I was crossing my fingers for uh, something that was going to be good for wand attack-based builds. That would have been something really unique and interesting to add to the game. Because, you know, uh, attack-based wanders, wand builds, where they actually attack with wand attacks, is, uh, you know, a pretty interesting sort of little niche uh, genre of builds. And uh, getting some love with an interesting craftable weapon here could have been pretty, you know, could have been pretty nice. So a bit of a shame that didn't happen, but still a decent choice for some spellcaster builds. So this final one here, I haven't moused over it yet because 
Prepare for your minds to be blown. The Deer Horn Claw. Six, six plus life and mana gained for each enemy hit by your attacks. And keep in mind that this, we already know that they have said that there's going to be an end, end late merciless version of this, where it's going to have higher implicit. Firstly, this does what, what uh, claw builds have been asking for a long time, giving life gain on hit higher level claws, which opens it up for the potential of physical life gain on hit claw builds. But it also, this is just such a strong implicit, holy crap, this is insane, this is so good for claw users. It's a very good patch to be claw users, and this is the, a lot of the love that claw users have been needing. But getting mana and life gained on this, I mean, that's just checking all your boxes, isn't it? That's taking care of any of your mana costs. Like, if you're using an elemental spectral throw, uh, you know, claw build right here, I mean, that's all your mana taken care of right there. And not to mention huge amounts of survivability from the life gain on hit. This is absolutely Absolutely insane. This is such a good addition for claw users. I am sure any of you guys who have ever tried to make a claw build and been kind of let down by just how they just never really work out to be that good, or you've had to go through the struggles of trying to make an elemental claw build and getting a low base claw with a high item level <laughs> to try and get life gain on hit because the high level claws all only had life leech on them. I'm sure you're cheering looking at this. It's a very, very nice addition to claw builds, and it's gonna we're going to see a lot more claw builds in this expansion, I think, just because of this one thing. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my analysis of these new items. Very cool addition to the game. All of these will have unique in-game 3D art that looks significantly different as well, so uh, even if you're not really keen on any of these new implicits and the potential builds they open up, which is a, there's a lot going on here. I mean, some of them a little bit lackluster, but most of these are really cool and are going to add some extra nice diversity to builds. This is very exciting to see new base items, but uh, even if you're not excited about those things, you can use these as skin transfers. Man, they're probably going to look pretty cool. Cool stuff, man. Cool stuff. I'm very excited. I mean, as if we weren't hyped enough for Act 4 already, and then they go and announce a whole bunch of new base items. I mean, I was psyched just about getting Curve of Blades. I was like, wow, they added a new base type, and then they came out with, what, 13 of them? <laughs> with 39 different new items when you add up all the tiers? Craziness, craziness. Alrighty, guys, that's it from me. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching. Unintentional right-click.